casting a resin positive into an alginate mold. Now we'll be uh, giving kind of an overview of the life casting process. Uh, the main focus here is the resin casting portion, but just some quick details here. We'll be using our 5 inch by 12 inch mold tube. That just is a very convenient way to make a hand or lower arm mold. And one of the key steps, since we'll be casting resin, we'll be using Vaseline or petroleum jelly as a release on Wendy's arm. And mainly that's to break the suction when her hand comes out of the mold. Uh, but also the reason we're using Vaseline or petroleum jelly is we don't want anything that could interfere with the chemistry of the uh, polyurethane resin later on. Now for this we'll be using AccuCast 590 alginate to make the mold and one of the reasons I'm using the 590 is uh, there's a lot of alginate formulas that are very wet and uh, we want to make sure we don't mix this with too much water because uh, anytime you're going to be pouring a resin material especially a very sensitive resin into an alginate mold you want to make sure that there's not any excess moisture present or that could cause problems later on. Now typical hand cast protocol here we're having Wendy dip her hand down and I'm smearing the alginate into the detail of her hands and then having her push it back down into the alginate. And with AccuCast 590 we have a five minute working time at 90 degree water temperature. Now here uh, we wanted to move pretty fast so I used fairly warm tap water so this actually cured in just a couple of minutes. And one of the little steps here when we're releasing a mold like this, always a good idea to uh, just let the weight of the cast help release it from your subject. And I'm having her wiggle her fingers just a little bit to help break that suction and then just very carefully ease that off. But you never want to have someone just yanking their arm out with any sudden drastic motions that might rip the alginate in the fingertips. Now another little key step here, anytime we're going to be pouring something into the mold that's uh, moisture sensitive, we want to remove any unnecessary alginate so we don't have a problem with that uh, contaminating anything later on. And here what we're making is a core so that Wendy can sculpt a prosthetic to fit her uh, hand. So I'm just removing any extra alginate and then what that's going to do is allow the uh, extra resin to be to fill up that tube and create a little base for her hand cast. Now this is just an overview of the life casting process so be sure to check out the links in the video description. If you've just discovered our videos or are curious about the life casting process I'll put a link to the life casting video page on our video library so be sure to check out those links below. Now ready to pre-mix our resin. We'll be using some of the TC1630 for this resin cast. TC1630 is a really popular resin for prosthetic applications and one of the nice things about this particular resin formula is its resistance to moisture. So a lot of times it can be poured up against a water-based clay or other patterns where uh, a little bit of moisture is present and still cure without a lot of bubbles on the surface like you typically get with polyurethane resins. And because this is a filled resin system you do need to pre-mix the parts A and B. Now ready to dry out our mold. Wendy is running a hair dryer on high in the mold for about 45 seconds there just to dry out any uh, residual moisture present in the cast. And then we're also going to spray in some 2300 spray release. Now that's mainly for the parts of the mold where the uh, resin will come in contact with that mold tube and that just ensures that we don't have that bonding to that mold tube. Now 1630 is mixed one to one by weight, not by volume. And that's a really important distinction. We have some products that are mixed one to one by volume and some that are mixed one to one, -to -one by weight. And we have some products that can be mixed either way, either one to one by weight or volume. But in this case, the 1630, because of that filler, you need to make sure you both pre-mix the A and B. And once you mix it together, make sure you mix it very well again so that, that uh, those fillers disperse evenly and uh, that will get you a much better quality in product. Now here we've measured out our first component we're ready to add our part A and even though this is a fairly uh, moisture resistant system just like any other polyurethane resin make sure once you've dispensed your resin the resin that you're going to use for this particular cast make sure you seal it up really well you'll notice here uh, once I've measured out my part A that I use a paper towel to clean the lip of that pail so that it doesn't uh, grab onto that lid and, and glue it into place but you want to make sure that you take care to wipe off those lids really good and put them back on and seal them very well otherwise that will start to crystallize and go bad 
Now, once you've measured out your A and B components in equal parts, you're ready to mix that up and make sure you take adequate time to thoroughly mix up your resin components. This, especially this being a filled resin system, you want to take care to make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom of the container just like you would with any resin system, but especially when you're working with a, a resin system where some of the fillers could try to settle out. You want to take care to scrape the sides and the bottom really well several times to make sure you have a nice even color. This particular resin has a, a gray and a black component so it's pretty easy to tell when you have a good even mix. When you have a nice dark gray, kind of a charcoal gray color, that's uh, with no little striations in it, that's when you have it thoroughly mixed. And now ready to pour that into an, our alginate mold. And also a little step that we don't show here, but real important, uh, sometimes if you're working with a wetter alginate formula, it's a good idea to flip the mold upside down and drain out any moisture that might accumulate in the fingertips. But again, that's one of the reasons why I'm using the 590 for this particular application, because there are some alginate formulas that uh, have different fillers that retain moisture differently. And some of those you'll find will contaminate uh, resins really easily because they're trapping in a lot more residual moisture than you get with some of these uh, AccuCast formulas. Now for the uh, 1630, our set time with that is right around about two hours before we can demold our part. So here in Texas, we can always move that out to our warehouse and accelerate the cure, but it's always a good idea to give it plenty of time to set up completely, especially once that base is nice and firm, we know that the, the rest of the hand is cured completely. So here we're ready to cut off the mold tube. And then, since we are demolding a resin positive, we'll have to just tear the alginate off of that positive. Uh, unlike sometimes when we cast silicone into an alginate mold, sometimes we can actually pull out multiple silicone casts without destroying that mold. In this case, we will have to destroy the mold, especially given the uh, hand position of Wendy's hand. We have her making kind of a claw shape with her hand so she can sculpt a prosthetic hand over that resin core. And that brings us to some of the other applications for this. In addition to using this to pour up a, a core for a prosthetic mold, we could also use this to pour up uh, artistic casts. Say if you wanted a, a resin option for a customer that wanted a set of hands poured up, you could easily use this without uh, much special effort because it does cure very well inside an alginate mold. And there we have our finished hand cast with uh, just a little minor cleanup and we'll have a perfect pull out of that. And some of you might be familiar with some of this already from our Instagram page. If you haven't, you can follow us on Instagram and see some of the other things we do around our shop. It's uh, our handle on Instagram is at Biddy Mold Supply. And there's our finished cast. And of course, like I said, you could do this for artistic hand casts, for uh, cores, for uh, prosthetic molds, any number of applications that require a hard positive pulled from an alginate mold. And of course, as always, the TC1630, as well as all the life casting supplies, are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com. And be sure to check out the video description for the links I mentioned earlier to both the product pages, as well as additional video resources on our video library. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe.